All right, John, uh, HCI Mesh has been one of the great new features of vSAN in rec recent versions here. What, what are some of the tips that you might offer somebody from a design perspective when using HCI Mesh? So there's a lot of different opportunities that come up with HCI Mesh. The ability to uh, separate compute and storage. You can have vSAN clusters share storage to other vSAN clusters. vSAN clusters share storage to multiple different compute only clusters. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities. Uh, some of this may be uh, what I call licensing oriented design, where you say, well, this cluster is going to run the small work or this one specific workload. I've got an application I want to license for a small cluster. I'll build a compute only cluster there and then have a, a big beefy, you know, storage cluster behind it. Um, but some of this also is just general performance considerations and design. So starting off, really want to see 25 gig or faster for the cluster that's providing storage to the remote compute cluster. Um, just because remember those VCN VM kernel ports, they're having to work twice as hard because they're not only handling the back end cluster chatter, but also that front end connection out to the remote cluster. Uh, your RAID splitting or your parity amplification gets done on the back end cluster rather than the front end. Um, you know, as one thing I will note is on uh, performance testing, there's a paper out there. I encourage everyone to go read tier one applications for VCN HCI mesh. We cover some of the kind of conclusions and discoveries we made. Uh, read heavy workloads, you're going to notice very little overhead. Uh, occasionally, it may be slightly faster just because there's less compute contention on that remote cluster. Um, it's really the write heavy and large block write workloads you need to pay attention to and make sure that you've got enough bandwidth and throughput uh, to handle that. Um, those are kind of the big things. But also, you know, if you've got a cluster that's going to be not running a lot of VMs or kind of a, dare say, a storage only cluster, make sure you have reasonable clock speeds. Um, look for, you know, NVMe, look for, you know, you'll need enough DIMMs to fill the memory channels, but maybe not to run a lot of VMs. Um, do think about all of the, the components of that scaling. Uh, and lastly, I ask, please don't try to build, you know, stuff a petabyte into three nodes and then share that to a hundred of our hosts. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, that's right. And that's a great point because we offer a lot of flexibility around there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a really good idea. But if I was hearing you right then though, uh, that's really an interesting consideration that one has to think about is that it's changing the shape of where the traffic is going to be sent through the network stack. So it's going to be changing, you know, where or uh, traversing across the uh, top of rack switches and things like that. So that's an interesting consideration there. Yeah, look for data network path adjacency. So don't build a, a beefy storage cluster and then have six switch hops that are oversubscribed to get there is the other thing. Mm. So um, do try to maybe consider if you've got a nice fast leaf spine environment, you've got a big storage cluster, it's going to feed multiple compute clusters, maybe even connect that directly to one of the spines, which is um, in a way. Um, or just make sure you have completely non-blocking paths all the way uh, to the spine to the other uh, switches. So that way you don't end up with any network port contention. So.